Lately, I've been reflecting back on my maternity leave and what I would do differently if I had to do it again. So let me share the three things I would change if we were to have another baby. But first off, if you're pregnant and new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell below so you don't miss any of my future releases. The first thing I would do differently would be to plan for my partner to take more time off after the baby is born. My partner took four weeks off after birth and then I had my parents here for three weeks. So you know that was like seven weeks of full-time support which I really thought it would be enough but to be quite honest with you I broke down in tears the first day I was alone at home. I honestly felt like so overwhelmed with everything I had to manage while being sleep deprived and having someone at home full time allowed me to sleep in in the morning um, and you know like just get some rest after being up at night multiple times because I was strictly breastfeeding at the time and you know like take naps in the afternoon without worrying about my baby needing me. Um, so I really think that sleep should be priority number one for mom in the first few months and um, I just feel like I could have used like full-time help for longer. Um, maybe if your baby is a great sleeper right away um, you can get away without that support but in my case I just felt like it was really needed. So I think having minimum three months of full support at home would be ideal. The second thing I would do would be to introduce bottle feeding early and continue bottle feeding just to maintain that ability. We bottle fed our baby quite early actually. I'd say like he was two weeks the first time we introduced the bottle um, and we were giving him my pump milk and it was so great because it allowed me to get more rest when I needed it. You know, like I could be like, okay, this morning I'm gonna sleep in for three hours and knowing that my baby would be fed. Um, but when my milk supply settled after a few weeks, it became quite annoying to pump and you know, I was just getting very, very little milk from each pumping session and I was just frustrated with it and I was like, oh, I'm just giving up on that. Then at four months, we decided to stop breastfeeding and I went over this whole journey in my postpartum video um, if you want to find out more about that whole story. Uh, but anyway, we had to reintroduce the bottle at, the, at that point. Um, and you know, we were successful with it, but we had to try different bottles and we definitely had a scary moment of, you know, oh my God, will he take the bottle again? And what if he can't take the bottle? Um, and we were lucky that he took it in the end uh, and we could move on to formula feeding. But I know a lot of my friends who could just not get the baby to take the bottle ever, right? And what that means for mom is that all these night shifts are on you and um, mom just never really gets the freedom to leave the house whenever she wants without baby. And she never gets those like seven, eight hours of night sleep, you know? Um, so if my baby had not taken the bottle, I think I was headed straight towards postpartum depression, to be quite honest with you, because my sleep deprivation would have got me right down that habit, rabbit hole. Um, and I was just not well mentally. So anyway, my point is that if we ever had another baby, I would introduce the bottle early, continue bottle feeding all the way, even if it required extra pumping and, you know, the frustration of it. But now I know the value of it. Um, and I may even say that I would introduce formula at night right away, just so we can share night duties, my partner and I. And yes, I know about the risk of nipple confusion in the first month, you know, if you introduce the bottle too early. But for me, that risk is quite small compared to the risk of being exhausted and depressed and not able to fulfill my mom role. So um, yeah, that would be my plan. And the last thing I would change would be to plan on an earlier return to work. I know this sounds crazy, right? <laughs> Um, but like I mentioned in my postpartum story video, I learned about myself that um, having a balance between working and taking care of my child is really what brings the most satisfaction and happiness in my life. Um, and I now know that six months is about what I can handle in terms of being a full-time stay-at-home mom. 
So knowing that, I would plan on, you know, having childcare for a few hours a week, whether it is with dad, a nanny or a family member, just to allow me to do that. And I had a lot of guilt around that initially because everybody kept saying, you know, like how time goes by fast and you should enjoy every minute. But I just came to realize that working a few hours a week does not mean that I'm not appreciating every minute. And one does not exclude the other, you know what I mean? And when I work for a few hours a week and have some space to myself, I come back to my baby and I'm a super mom, honestly. I'm just so happy to see my son and I'm singing songs and cooking great meals and wanting to do it all with him because my cup is full and I'm the best version of myself. Whereas when I'm completely exhausted from parenting all day and you know, I'm just so tired, I'm not the mom I want to be and I'm just in survival mode, right? So anyway, in my opinion, it's pretty clear which scenario is best for my family and I would definitely plan on making that happen next time. I would love to hear your stories and what you would do differently if you had to go on mat leave again. Thanks for watching.